So what is netcode? Let's take a look at how Unity defines it because I really like this explanation. Netcode refers to the create part of multiplayer game development and is an umbrella term when referring to parts of a game that handle networking and synchronization between clients and servers. They talk to each other by sending data, whether it's tracking player location, scene transitions, spawn points, or any other gameplay events or data, over something called a transport. While this communication can be performed manually, it can become tedious or even overwhelming to manage. So netcode libraries like this one, or other packages like Photon or Mirror, will abstract out this functionality to higher level APIs which are easier to use and maintain. For example, network variables or remote procedure calls, known as RPCs, are very succinct when compared to manually sending messages across the wire. We've seen manual message sending in some of my past videos covering WebSocket communication and also the Mirror KCP setup within Custom Gamelift. While there are a few third-party packages out there to handle this challenge, Unity's netcode is a fully functional network abstraction that should meet the demands of building out your multiplayer game. And the best part is, is that it's a seamless integration within Unity's ecosystem. In my last video, I talked about how to host your game on multiplayer with some basic matchmaker configuration, plus the code required to wire it all together. But we didn't get to see the communication or synchronization capabilities between the clients and server. That will be the goal of this series. In this video, which is the first part in this three-part series, I'll review how to set up and install netcode, the steps to create a network manager, and the fundamental components you'll be using throughout your multiplayer game. Part 2 will review the networking tools for tracking state, communicating actions, and synchronizing location and physical interactions between client and server. Part 3 will cover the tools for spawning network-aware objects and strategies for improving runtime efficiency with object pooling. It will also cover the technique for improving client connections and the benefits of using the Network Scene Manager for scene and object synchronization. At the end of this series, you should have a good idea of how to get started with netcode and use its feature set to tackle the challenges you'll face when building out your multiplayer game. Throughout this review, I'll be referring to the same demo project used in my last video. And I want to highlight the fairly extensive documentation Unity has put together covering all these topics. So if you're looking for clarification or maybe you're stuck on something, go check out their resources as there's an abundance of helpful information there. And of course you're always welcome to drop by the Discord if you have any questions, but I'm sure you'll be a netcode expert by the end of this video. First off, we have our list of supported platforms, which is something that you always want to check on before you get started on a project. This seems fairly substantial as it supports all the major operating systems, extended reality platforms, consoles like PlayStation or Xbox, and finally WebGL. We reviewed the netcode package installation in my last video, but let's just do a quick review. Within the Unity editor, open up the package manager. Hit the little plus sign and hit add package by name. Copy and paste in the package name com unity netcode game objects into the field and then hit add. Once you see it in your package list, run the project just to make sure nothing broke. Now that netcode is installed, we can get started. Probably the most important netcode component, the network manager is required to enable networking capabilities for your multiplayer project. Before you do anything with netcode, you'll need a network manager installed as part of a game object. Let's quickly go through the setup process. Create an empty game object, name it Network Manager, then hit Add Component, and then search and select Network Manager. Highlighted in the inspector, select Unity Transport for your protocol type, and a Unity Transport component should be auto-added to the object, and that's the minimal required configuration. The Network Manager contains all of your project's netcode related settings and can also be updated programmatically. You can add a player prefab here that will automatically spawn once the client is approved and connected. There's also a property list where you can register the network prefabs you plan to spawn during the game. You can enable the connection approval callback here for when you need to perform some checks before the client connection is accepted. And we'll review these in more detail shortly. The companion transport has additional connection properties like max payload size, connection timeout, and a place to hardcode target IP import. And there's no need to link a script directly to this network manager game object, 
as you can just create a script to capture the setup, callbacks, and connection management, like here in this demo project. The network manager can be accessed through a singleton exposed through the netcode library. It's where you control the starting and stopping of clients, servers, or hosts, respectively. You can subscribe to client connect and disconnect events, and also perform a connection approval check on all incoming connection requests. Along with these basic networking tools, the network manager provides other systems like prefab handler, scene manager, spawn manager, and a few other configuration elements. Keep in mind that it is important that you don't try to access these systems until the network manager has been started. Essentially, the network manager is the heart of our networking capabilities and gives our project access to the tools and systems needed to manage them. With the network manager in place, let's take a look at the two most fundamental components you'll be working with for networked objects. Anytime you have a script where you want to use Netcode Aware tools like network variables, RPCs, network transforms, etc. to track an object across servers and clients, you need to attach a network object to it or to its parent. Along with access to these tools, the network object also establishes the network ID that clients and servers use to identify networked objects. This can be helpful when you want to act on a specific object in the scene. For an example network object, in my demo I created a ball prefab that is tracked across the server and all clients. Each player can throw a ball at the other player, and the action of beginning the throw to tracking its location is possible because it's a network object. But the ground and scenery around the players are static and remain unchanged during gameplay, so there's no need to track them over the network. When looking at the ball prefab, you can see it has a network object component, along with a few other components that I'll touch on later. But it also has a script where I manage specific actions related to the object. Let's take a look. Right away you'll notice we extend from the network behavior class. A network object component and the extension of a network behavior class are both required for using network variables, RPCs, and any custom networking actions you may want to add. As far as I can tell, you will always extend from a network behavior on your scripts that interact with the network and are part of a game object with a network object component. They always work together. In this ball manager script, I use a network variable to track the player designation of who threw it, like player 1 or 2. I also use the network aware properties isClient and isServer to channel the respective actions when a ball collides with a player. The network behavior class also gives you access to the onNetworkSpawn and onDestroy functions, where you can override and perform any custom logic when an object is spawned or destroyed. This is nice for performing setup and breakdown actions based around the life cycle of your game object. Even though network behavior replaces the use of mono behavior, you can still make use of the typical life cycle functions like awake, start, and update. Just be aware that the order in which they are called will change based on whether they are dynamically spawned or in scene placed. You can read more about it here in the docs. So anytime you're creating an object that needs to share properties or perform actions over the network, you're going to attach a network object to the game object, and any attached netcode aware scripts will extend from network behavior. Now that we have the fundamental parts covered, let's review some of the ways to communicate over the network. 